Hi class, welcome to another painting session online. Um, I am going to be painting a bluegill today. Our concept is going to be, what is our motivation behind a painting? What's our concept? What's our motivation? So I catch these fish with my son Vince. I just love going out and, and fishing with him, spending that, that time, that one-on-one -on -one time. I like fishing, I like eating fish, the whole bit. I also see comical piece where they're not quite dead and in the pan yet so I, I like I paint them kind of alive um, that's my goal and so my concept in this one you know is to have a piece of garnish down here him still alive looking down at the garnish and you ask why would that be important to have a concept when we have a concept or a drive or a focus we can weed out or take away the things that are going to be distracting we can be um, I grew up with an army ranger uncle, and he'd always say, high speed and long range. And how do we, be, how do we get high speed? How do we get to get the, the painting finished? Because a lot of times when I see people painting in class, they're kind of meandering and rambling, which is fun, but we want to get the painting finished. We want to get to the point. We want to say it, right? So by doing that, when I start here, which I normally do, why, why would I start there? That's his eye. That's going to be my measurement. I'm going to dial in a lot of pieces there. It's going to have the brightest. It's a bluegill, so this blue is going to be really important. As I start to bleed things out, maybe these shadows are, over here aren't going to be as important as this area or this interaction here. Um, I wanted you also to see that I've drew, I, I drew this up, I laid it out. Um, I want to set myself up for success, and I want you guys to do the same thing. Because um, as I'm doing it, I have a group, and then I have one. Like, I, there is a, beyond the concept, there is a design that I'm going after. Also, the, the lighting effect um, of the plate and how I space these out. So, find something... You don't have to paint a fish. I get it. Not everybody wants to, to paint fish, but uh, find something from around the house, something that you're interested in, and um, try to come up with a concept where there's an energy back and forth of, of whatever it might be that you're working on. And follow along. I'm painting on a gessoed board. It's a piece of masonite that I sand down, put two or three coats of gesso on. Um, I like to, to actually draw on these boards just to give myself the best opportunity to succeed. Um, and after I get down kind of where things are going with the pencil, then I start to do my underpainting. When I pick the color for the underpainting, I usually try to find a complement, something that's going to bring out the final color. Uh, you can do analogous where you would put another of the same color underneath which would make it richer. In this situation knowing that there'd be green on top I chose the purple. Um, just thought it was kind of fun. At this point I start to lay in my color and I'm going to paint on top of this green but as I'm putting down the strokes if you notice I'm going the direction that I feel that um, the flesh of the or the, the fish goes, you know, so I'm not, it's not arbitrary, scrub it in. I actually want to try to, as many times as possible, um, show how the form turns. And that is through the brush stroke, the direction of the brush stroke. Um, when we're creating form, we always want to think about our shadows. This blue area that I've just painted has, has a, um, a really important effect because if without that blue we won't know where the light source is coming from and we have a warm light source uh, in the lit area which is warmer and then um, to make that look warmer I've, I'm adding a cool um, side of the plate which will then make the warm side warmer so we're going to finish this off with um, the, the plate shadow that it's going to be on the ground or on the table I'm going to paint the eye first. I do that with almost every animal and person that I paint because the eye is the measurement to create the best likeness. 
we look at the eye when we meet somebody or we see some animal. We want to see, is it nice? Is it mean? Is it going to eat us? Is, or can we eat it? <laughs> and as we look at that area, that's where I'm going to put my finest drawing, the brightest color, these types of things. Um, and obviously, there's always an, a, a time that you can change that. But here, I want to get this dialed in first. And then I'm going to make decisions based off how it compares to the paint around the eye. As you're painting, you're going to find that you go one direction for a while with, a, let's say, green. And um, if you look at secondaries, green, orange, and purple. So as I'm going through the green, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I got a lot of green. And now I'm going to put in some orange to kind of feel a balance. And here you see me underlining the blue gill with actually purple. Um, When we're trying to get the best luminosity or the light out of a, a paint color, uh, there's a couple things to do. We can use that triad like I was just talking about with the secondaries. We can also uh, adjust our paint application. And by using a palette knife, you're going to get the best reflection, best, uh, purest color. And just because you put it down with a palette knife doesn't mean it has to stay as a palette knife stroke. It's just an opportunity to get paint down flat, smooth, and bright uh, with a crisp edge. And then you can go in and adjust that with, with any brush that you like or paper towel, your finger. As the, the colors start to develop in the fish, that white of the plate is uh, now not allowing me to judge the value. So by darkening the plate, now I can now I can see what the, the fish colors are and I can start to flesh that out. No pun intended. When I can, I want to go with the, the um, form going around it to try to help create that illusion that it's not flat, that it actually is a round fish or, you know, it has depth and thickness. This is another time when we, as I'm painting, I'm, I'm pushing the color. It's not quite that light, not that purple, but I'm looking back to the face and I'm not sure if I want it to be so boring back there, so dark. And I'm trying to lighten up my, my imagery a little bit, um, make it more interesting than our photograph. Thinking through our paint mixing and how we load the brush allows us to have more successful brush strokes. So when you put the paint on, think about how can I do this in fewer strokes? I have the fish, I feel like, to a, a point where I need to start developing the the area that it's next to, the plate that it's on, and to create that um, the depth or that illusion, it, I can't just can't just be the fish. It has to have the background involved. Um, now you can do that. I've seen them on white, like a piece of white canvas with nothing but the the fish or just or the portrait. You could totally do it like that as well. But that's not how this painting was. Um, drawn out, so I have to take that into account quickly. Now here I'm going in with a palette knife to really put in my highlights. Now that I have more of the painting to look at, I can say, okay, I'm going to push um, on these bright colors around the face for fun, just literally for fun, to make it fun to look at, to be enjoyable. Um, and as we push things, that's what as, as an artist, that's part of our job. You know, how far can we push it before it becomes garish, be before it becomes um, something that is just so ugly to look at? I had a lot of things to say there. To bring out that blue, I think the orange 
or a little bit of red is going to allow the blue to be a better, a better blue. Now we could use purple, we could use um, another, like a darker blue, which would bring it out. But because I already have the orange uh, in the lower section of the fish and on the table, you kind of try to use that thread to go through the whole, through the whole painting, the whole fish. Try to think of it as a thread that is woven through the whole painting. Now these strokes I'm putting in here, I'm going to actually dial them back off camera. Um, and I'm going to, I like them, um, but they were a little bit too strong for the overall painting. And I'm going to use that concept in a future painting. So sometimes you find, like we were talking about concepts, like I like the idea of the raised fin against the shadow, but it's not going to work for this painting. And I have to be a if I don't have that concept like we talked about in the beginning, um, we just throw everything at it and the kitchen sink and then the painting is no fun to look at because we don't know what's important. I turned the camera off just after this portion of the painting and had to finish it um, without any distraction. Hey guys, this wraps up our painting of the bluegill this week. Just had a lot of fun painting all the color. Uh, try to find something around your house or a photograph of something that you're going to paint this week that will push the limits of the, of the color, the composition, the values. Maybe it's a super soft painting. Um, just try to push it a little bit further than maybe you would uh, and see if you like the results. Uh, classes should be starting up pretty soon. And I look forward to seeing everybody in person. You guys enjoy painting this week. Have a fabulous week. See you soon.